Hello and welcome to this video in which we sew together Ica Banana. This beautifully finished fanny pack comes in three sizes and several shape options. A basic shape, a two-panel shape that lets us work with two-tone effects or stripes in both directions, for example, giving us a graphic effect, and finally a rather original shape with flat pleats on the front. The back of the fanny pack can be made simply pocketless or with a zipped pocket for keys, cell phone or wallet. We've thought about practicality too, with a maxi central zip opening and an inside pocket. In terms of the three sizes on offer, the S bag is ideal for children, but also suits adults who want a small bag for everyday use. Size M is perfect for adults, male or female. It's also suitable for children in maxi fanny packs. Finally, size L is an extra large fanny pack for adults. It's really practical, with a maxi capacity close to that of a small backpack. The fanny packs in the different sizes feature an adjustable shoulder strap for carrying on the shoulder and, as an option for sizes S and M, a handle on the back for hand carrying along the body. The skill level is easy to intermediate. The basic version without back pocket is really quick and easy to sew, allow two to three hours maximum. The other versions, those with a back pocket and the pleated version, require a little more time but are frankly hardly more difficult to make. With Ica Banana, you learn how to assemble a lining, pockets, zipper, and adjustable shoulder strap. As is often the case with accessories, it's a fun way to sew, and with just a little fabric, you'll be able to complete a project in no time. For outer fabrics, we recommend medium to heavyweight woven fabrics. Gabardine, canvas, corduroy, baby corduroy, denim, dense woolen sheets, chacords, imitation leather, or even leathers. We can also use thinner fabrics such as linen or woven waffle cloth for a soft bag look. You can also use a quilted fabric that you've already bought or that you're going to quilt yourself. You can watch our video dedicated to quilting techniques, which can be viewed on our free access website. Finally, you can use Shepard style knit. For the lining, you can use poplin, chambray, linen or seersucker. You could use viscose, but then you'd have to overcast the selvages and I recommend reinforcing this material, which is a little more fragile for accessories, with a fine woven interlining on the wrong side. As an option, if you want a fanny pack with good hold, simply add interfacing to the lining. I choose to interface the lining because there are simply fewer pieces to interface than without a fabric. The choice of interfacing quality depends on the outer fabric and, above all, on the desired effect. For example, with a classic woven G700 interlining, our lining is reinforced but retains a nice suppleness. If you use a non-woven interlining that is soft before installation, you'll find that, once applied with an iron, it becomes more cardboardy. Alternatively, you can use a fleece interfacing such as Vlees Lines H630 for a light wadding effect. The effect is different again, giving your bag a bit of volume and therefore support, but keeping it supple and comfortable. It's worth noting that if your fabric is already quilted, there's no need for interfacing as the fabric already has some hold. For other supplies, you'll first need a needle suitable for your project. For fanny packs, we recommend 90 or even 100 gauge needles to get through the layers. You can also use jeans needles if you're using thick gabardines or denim fabrics. If you're sewing leather, use special leather needles. Whatever needle you use, set your machine's stitch setting to a length of three. You'll also need polyester thread for its strength or optionally, denim or extra strong threads which are thick, reinforced threads for even stronger seams. But to be honest, classic polyester threads do the trick just fine. You'll also need a 25, 35 or 45 centimeters non-separable zipper for the main opening, depending on the project and size of the bag, and an optional 15 centimeters zipper for the back pocket, whatever the size of the bag. The length of a zipper corresponds to the length of the teeth, excluding the excess braid at the ends. As for the quality of the zipper teeth, 
You can choose either metal teeth or nylon spiral sippers like these. These are available with larger or smaller spirals. Teeth or spirals 4 to 6 mm in diameter are best suited to back projects. For metal zippers, Ikati offers on its eShop the required lengths of 25, 35 and 45 cm in off-white and black. Alternatively, you can take standard commercial lengths of 30, 40 and 50 cm and shorten them by removing the top teeth. For spiral zippers, the simplest and most economical solution is to use zippers by the meter to be cut to length. Finally, there are two possible options, one slider or two sliders for a double opening on your bag. You'll also need optional supplies for the shoulder strap and back handle. The shoulder strap is 30 mm wide for size S and 40 mm for sizes M and L. The straps are made of cotton or polyester. The important thing is that they should be strong enough but flexible enough to be adapted to a back project. I invite you to consult the table of requirements in your instruction booklet according to back size. Note that the back handle option requires 20 centimeters of strap in addition to the shoulder strap. Finally, for the shoulder strap, you'll need a metal or plastic loop to attach the shoulder strap, as shown here in rectangular form. You'll also need an adjustment buckle, also in metal or plastic. These buckles need to be adapted to the width of the strap. Generally speaking, 30 to 32 mm buckles are suitable for 30 mm straps and 38 to 40 mm buckles for 40 mm straps. As the straps are flexible, they tuck nicely into a slightly narrower buckle, as shown here. We made different versions of each model, which I'll present to you now. In size S, we made a simple basic fanny pack in 240 grams per square meter Ikati heart gabardine, for which I interfaced the lining with woven vlies line. We used a khaki meter zipper with two sliders and a printed poplin lining from rifle paper. Also in size S, here's a flat pleated fanny pack in Atelier Brunette's light gabardine color bubblegum which I chose not to interlace. The shoulder strap and zipper are off-white, and the last little fanny pack, my favorite, is a homemade quilt from Ica Tea Shop Fabrics, made with rifle paper poplin, medium wadding, and off-white poplin lining. This quilting is quick to make, as all we had to do was form and top stitch together a 20 centimeters high mattress with two layers of printed poplin and wadding. Then I cut the pieces and made the fanny pack. Preparing the material in this way took me about 30 minutes, so it's quick and economical, because you don't need much fabric for each layer. On my little fanny pack, I sewed a cute woven label, another Ikati creation. As for the size M fanny packs, I sewed five models, a basic one in thick canvas with a zipped pocket on the back and a striped poplin lining, without interlining, I used metal zippers and a woven voyage label, a two-panel version with an interesting graphic effect. The back pocket is sipped and has an inlaid handle for when worn by hand. I chose a floral rifle paper poplin lining. Here again, I sewed a woven label. Another size M fanny pack, a basic version in floral print linen, lined in plain poplin with an off-white zipper by the meter and a gold nylon spiral. We added a decorative label at the bottom. The last two fanny packs in size M are pleated fanny packs. One is in heavy gabardine atelier brunette majestic purple with a stripe lining and a zipper on which I added two sliders mouth to mouth, in other words in opposition. Finally, it has a zipped back pocket and I chose to put a woven label on the back. The other is in denim and is lined with rifle paper printed poplin which I interlaced to give it a little more hold. For decoration, I made a little pom-pom and imitation leather. In the video, I'll show you how to make this ornament. I made three maxi fanny packs, a two-tone version in heavy atelier brunette off-white and black gabardine, with a woven label and metallic zippers, a maxi pleated fanny pack in light gabardine, in ivy green, with a stripe lining that I interlaced to give it a more formal look. I opted for metallic supplies. And finally, another favorite fanny pack, a basic shaped fanny pack in animal print Sherpa. It's super graphic and cuddly like a comforter. As you can see, 
Ica Banana is fun and creative, making fanny packs for the whole family and great gifts for friends. Before you start sewing, I'll show you how to use spiral zippers by the meter. It's a simple and practical option because you always have a meter of zipper to hand, which you can use as you wish. You'll need to cut the required length plus five centimeters. For example, for a size S fanny pack zipper, you'll need one with a 25 centimeters opening. You'll therefore cut a total length of 30 centimeters, 25 plus five. Frankly, chain spirals are easy to cut with conventional scissors. Next, open the spirals a few centimeters to thread the sliders. The sliders look like this. You have a rounded side with two openings and the opposite side is flat with an opening to close the spirals. We gently thread one of the spirals into one of the openings on the rounded side, then hold it in place while introducing the other side of the spiral into the other opening in the same way. We then push the flat part of the slider a little to further engage the spirals in the slider. Then hold the ends of the braids in place with one hand. Repeat at the other end of the zipper with a second slider to create a double opening zipper. Repeat the threading operation gently, without forcing. The easiest way is to press the two ends against the table with two fingers and pull the slider with the other hand to slide the slider all the way through. Once the sliders are in place, Stitch the ends back and forth through the knits of the spiral to prevent the sliders from sticking out. We could stitch with a tone-on-tone -tone thread 2.5 cm from each end to obtain the required opening of 25 cm for size S in our example, or even closer to the ends, so as not to see this stitch on the finished fanny pack. The opening is even enlarged. It doesn't really matter. In any case, you'll see that the 90 gauge needle passes very well through the knits. Here are the versions we're going to assemble together during this video. The two panel size M with striped denim lined with printed poplin, a pleated version in denim with a pom-pom, and a basic version in heart printed gabardine. In terms of pieces to cut and supplies, Let's take a look at the three models we'll be sewing together. First for the basic version without back pocket. For the front, one piece plus its lining and interfacing glued to the back, one top plus its lining and optional interfacing, the sides and their interface linings, and for the back, one back piece plus its lining and optional interfacing, the inside pocket, one zipper, a strap, buckles and a label. For the two panel version with back pocket and back handle. For the front, two front pieces in two colors or two directions, plus a full one panel lining, one top plus its lining, the sides and their linings. For the back, the four pieces in fabric, including the pocket in the other direction of the fabric, but you could have chosen another color. The pocket linings and the pocket bottom in the fabric lining, and the back lining in one piece and the inside pocket in fabric. And finally, the two zippers, one of 15 centimeters and one of 35 centimeters, the strap for the shoulder strap and 20 centimeters more for the back handle, the buckles and a decorative label of your choice. As an option, you can overcast all the pieces, which can be done with an overcast on the serger or a zigzag stitch on the sewing machine. It's time consuming and not essential as all the seams will be enclosed, but personally, I like to overcast because my pieces don't fray while I'm sewing. Finally, for a pleated version with back pocket for the front, one specific front piece with notches for the pleats, its interface lining, one top plus its interface lining, the sides and their interface linings. For the back, the four fabric pieces, including the two-part pocket, the pocket linings and pocket bottom in lining fabric, and finally, the one-piece back lining, the inner denim pocket. Finally, the two zippers, one of 15 centimeters and one of 35 centimeters, the shoulder strap, the buckles, and a decorative label of your choice.
We start by preparing and lining the inside pocket on the back. At the top of the inside pocket, iron a 1 cm tuck, wrong sides together, followed by a 2 cm tuck. Fold the second 2 cm tuck right sides together, leaving the first tuck in place. Pin the ends and, to hold in place, stitch straight stitch 1 cm from the selvages and 2 cm high on each side. That's it. I'll trim off the corners and turn the top pocket hem wrong sides together. The ticks on the sides are formed on the 1 cm seam allowances. I've ironed the top hem and the 1 cm ticks on the two sides of the pocket. Pin the top and top stitched at 1.8 cm to hold it in place. Note that the bottom pocket is left bare without tucks. Here are the pockets for our three models. Mark the centers of the pocket and back lining. Place the inside pocket on the right side of the back lining piece, aligning the bottom center marks together. Pin the sides with the 1 cm tucks and the bottom without tuck. Then stitch at 2 mm on one side, starting with a back and forth stitch, then the bottom in the seam allowances, and finally stitch up the other side of the pocket to finish at the top of the pocket with a back and forth stop stitch. At the corners, Leave the needle planted in the fabric. Lift the foot to rotate the work into the corner. Then lower the foot and progress along the bottom edge, and so on. In the case of a model with a pocketless back, as shown here for the khaki model, I invite you to go straight to the next chapter on fronts. If there's a pocket on the back, as is the case with this striped version, the back pocket can be made in fabric color 1 or in a contrasting color, or as here, with the two panels worked in a different direction from the stripe. Beforehand, I'll chalk the centers of the back pocket in the main fabric, piece 5B, the center of the small zipper, and also mark the center of the top piece for the zipper pocket, piece 5A. Place the right sides together edge of the zipper along the fabric pocket, piece 5B marking the middles, and pin in place. The zipper can be opened in either left or right hand direction. I'll open the zipper slightly to clear the work. I'll stitch with a special zipper presser foot, shifting the needle a little, which should be five or six millimeters from the zipper teeth. Start with a stop stitch. As you approach the zipper slider, stick the needle into the fabric. Lift the presser foot and move the slider to the other side of the foot. Then lower the foot to continue stitching, finishing with a few back and forth stitches. I'll then align the right side of the lining pocket along the wrong side braid of the zipper sandwiched between the fabric and lining. I'll pin through all three layers. I turn the work over to stitch on the fabric side, not the lining side, exactly along the stitching already done this time taking in all the layers. And there you have it. I'll fold the fabric and lining wrong sides together and carefully press along the zipper. Then I'll top stitch along the edge of the fabric using the special zipper presser foot or a classic presser foot like mine. Here's the result. Now repeat with the other zipper braid and the top back pocket piece, piece 5A. I'll align right sides together the braid opposite the right side of piece 5A along the selvage, wedging the middles first. Then I pin and stitch 5 millimeters from the zipper teeth. Next. I'll place lining piece 5A right sides together along the selvage, then pin before stitching fabric side, exactly following the seam previously made. I'll now fold up, press and top stitch to within two millimeters of the fabric edge. I'll place the zipped pocket on the right side of the lining pocket, piece 6. You'll need to align the selvages. 
It's possible that your zipped pocket is just a little higher or lower than the pocket base if you've shifted the needle a little too much or too little when stitching the zipper. Nothing to worry about. This little gap will be taken up and hidden in the seam allowances later. So I pin. Then I stitch two or three millimeters all around to hold in place. In case of the handle option on the back for when worn by hand as well, I'll cut a 20 centimeters length of strap. Then I'll place each end of the strap along the sides of the pocket, about three centimeters from the zipper. I'll pin it in place. As the strap is slightly longer than the width of the pocket, it will bulge a little, leaving room for the hand. I'm going to test the position of the hand before attaching the handle, to adjust if necessary, by lowering the position of the strap, for example. To test the position of the handle, I pass my hand through the strap with the thumb over the strap and the other fingers under the strap. The idea is to support the bottom of the fanny pack with the tips of your three fingers, middle, index and ring, so you can hold your fanny pack in your hand when worn alongside your body. If the hold is uncomfortable, adjust the position of the strap downwards. It all depends on the size of the fanny pack and the user's hand. By the way, in my opinion, the handle is not suitable for size L. The maxi fanny pack is really big and will be more comfortable when worn over the shoulder. Once the handle position is set, I'll stitch both ends in the seam allowances to hold in place in the margins. Once the pocket is ready, I'll shape the back by aligning a back side right sides together piece, five coulombs, with the side of the pocket. I'll pin and stitch at one centimeter. Then iron the seam allowances to the side piece and top stitch two millimeters from the edge of the fabric. Of course, for the back handle option, repeat the previous step with the webbing handle sandwiched between the pocket and the five coulombs side piece. That's it, I've stitched and I'll repeat with the other piece on the back in symmetry. You can see the result with the two back pocket versions, the striped version and the denim version. The pocket backs are both ready. We'll now move on to the fanny pack fronts for the two panel front option. We'll align right sides together, the two pieces one beyond their height, with two different stripe directions, as shown here. Pin and stitch at one centimeter. All done. I've also pressed the seam allowances open. Optionally, you can top stitch each side of the seam at two millimeters to hold the seams in place, as I did on my side. For the pleated front, I'm going to form the pleats on specific piece one coulomb. I'll start forming a first pleat. Personally, I'll start with a center pleat. I place the pleat notch on the next one according to the direction of the arrow on the pattern. I lay the value of the pleat formed on the wrong side of the fabric towards the center of the piece and hold it in place with a pin. I can then repeat with the other two folds on the same half of the piece. The front will take on a similar shape to piece 1A with extra pleats. I'll then repeat with the pleats on the other half to be formed symmetrically to the first. So I place the mockings on the next one in the opposite direction, lay the seam allowances towards the center, then pin, and so on. When all the folds are formed, I iron to flatten and stitch into the seam allowances to hold everything in place. Once I've stitched, I'll remove the pins and repeat the pleat formation on the front lining of piece one coulomb. Here's the front and its pleated lining. Now that the backs and fronts are prepared for all versions, as a preamble, and as an option, I'll sew a decorative label onto the front, 
whichever version of the front I choose. To do this I'll place the woven label in the desired right side and hold it in place with pins or temporary textile glue. I place the label in the center, a little up for the striped version, in the middle for the basic heart version, and on the side for the pleated version. I then center it between the last fold and the side, removing the centimeter of seam allowances. Then I stitch two millimeters from the edges of the label all around, starting and finishing with a back and forth stitch. Here's how it looks on my different models. The label placements are examples. It's up to you to choose the position you like best. We'll now take care of fitting the zipper at the front. The installation of the zipper is the same for all bag versions. We'll illustrate assembly with the striped two-panel version. The direction of opening is recommended with the zipper on the right for right-handers, but obviously this can be adjusted depending on whether you're right or left-handed, or how you want to sling the fanny pack. I'll place right sides together the edge of the zipper along the fabric front, wedging the middles first, and pin. Then I open the zipper slightly to expose the work. I'll stitch with a special zipper presser foot, shifting the needle a little, which should be 5mm from the zipper teeth. We start with a stop stitch. As you approach the zipper slider, stick the needle into the fabric. Lift the presser foot and move the slider to the other side of the foot. Lower the foot and continue stitching, finishing with a few back and forth stitches. Next, align the right side of the lining in front along the wrong side of the zipper braid sandwiched between the fabric and the lining. Pin through the three layers. Place fabric wrong side out. Stitch on the fabric side, not the lining, exactly along the stitching already done, this time taking in all the layers. That's it. I'll fold over the fabric and the lining wrong sides together, then carefully iron along the zipper and hold the front and lining in place with a few pins. Except for the pleated version, I still need to top stitch 2 mm from the edge of the fabric. For the pleated version, top stitching is not suitable as it would reduce the volume given by the pleats too much. Here are the three versions with the zipper mounted on the front. For the pleated version, I didn't top stitch to avoid crushing the pleats. You can then repeat with the other zipper braid and the piece on top, piece two. Align right sides together the braid opposite the right side of piece two, fabric, along the most rounded edge, wedging the middles first. We'll pin, gradually deforming the work as we align curves with different inflections. Then stitch five millimeters from the zipper teeth. Once stitched, place the top lining right side up against the wrong side of the braid selvage, then pin before stitching through the layers on the fabric side, following exactly the seam previously made. For this I'm going to stitch the outer fabric facing me. It's stitched. Then fold up the two tops, carefully press along the zipper, and pin the top of the front and its lining in place. Top stitch 2 mm from the edge of the fabric, except for the pleated version, which is not top stitched. Here are the three versions with the zipper assembled with the front and top. For the basic and two panel models, we top stitched along the zipper but not for the pleated version to let the pleats give more volume to your fanny pack. We'll continue assembling the fanny pack by sewing the sides to the fronts.
I'm going to align right sides together one out of fabric only end of the bottom front pieces and then top to the full height of the front three side piece. To do this, I need to spread the lining pieces apart. I'll pin the outer fabric of the lower front piece and then the upper front piece to the side piece. Then stitch one centimeter from the edge of each side of the zipper without picking up the lining. You have to stop before the zipper as it's impossible to go any further. For the lower part, I do the same. The stitching must end just inside the tip of the side piece. It's stitched. There's still a gap at the zipper. We can then repeat the symmetrical process at the other end of the front and top pieces, as I've already done on my side. Repeat the previous step with the lining end of the front and side pieces to be aligned. Pin and stitch on each side of the zipper. All that remains is to close the zipper opening, stitching through all the layers, out of fabric and lining, at the zipper ends. Repeat in symmetry with the other side piece. Here's the result on the three models currently being assembled. The fabric sides were folded against the lining sides wrong sides together and ironed. Now we're going to spread the lining side piece. I'll cut 10 centimeters of webbing and align and center one end on the edge of the right fabric side piece, front side facing you. Pin in place. Take the remaining strap of 90, 120 or 120 centimeters respectively for sizes S, M or L. Pin and center one end to the edge of the opposite fabric side. Finally, stitch one end of the strap to the fabric side, 5 mm from each side. Here's the result. I'm going to show you another mounting option for the small piece of webbing on the pleated version, which is not described in the instruction booklet. I'll cut it to 6 cm and thread it through a loop. I'll then fold it in half and center align the two ends joined at the selvage on the right front side in fabric only and stitch through the layers. Here's the result on the three fanny packs in progress. In the first case, I'll attach the loop later, whereas here, I've already attached it to the straps, so it's really up to you. We'll now close the fanny pack by assembling the front and back, first in fabric and then in lining. I'll show you how to do it with the striped model, but you'll have to do it the same way on all versions. I temporarily hold the loose strap pieces against the fabric front with pins only. Then I partially open the zipper, which is important to have a passage to turn the fanny pack inside out on the right side. I'll pull the lining away from the fabric front. Then I'll line up right sides together the back and front selvages in fabric only. Then pin the side and bottom selvages together. And I'll stitch at one centimeter. Don't hesitate to trim the seam allowances at the skill level pieces, as I'm doing here on the khaki version, to avoid over thickness. It's stitched. I can turn the visible lining work inside out. I'm going to spread the front and back in fabric and repeat the previous step with the linings. So I'll line up right sides together the front and back in lining, pin the sides and bottom of the selvages in lining only, and finish by stitching at one centimeter while leaving, this time, a large unstitched opening at the bottom to enable you to turn the work over later. That's it, stitched. All that's left for this step is to align the top of the fanny pack front and back in lining, then front and back in fabric, and pin the four layers together. Once pinned, I'll stitch one centimeter through the four layers. Once the stitching is done, trim off the four corners to enable the fanny pack to be turned right side out without excess thickness and be careful not to cut the seam. As here, 
I recommend V-notching to obtain nice rounded edges when turning. I can turn the bag right side out through the opening left in the lining. Watch out for the pins holding the corners, they'll sting. Then I pass through the zipped opening. I'll mark the corners close to the strap, and I'll also mark the curves at the bottom of the fanny pack by running my hand along the bottom of the back. Afterwards, I recommend ironing the rounding as well as the seams between the back and the top. Then I'll close the opening left in the lining by ticking in one centimeter, pinning and stitching either by machine on the right side of the lining or with slip stitches by hand, as I'll be doing on my side. For hand stitching, first I stitch into the fabric and exactly opposite, then I shift my needle and stitch opposite, etc. Here are the three fanny packs turned inside out with the bottoms closed. The small one has the bottom closed with machine stitching, which has formed a very discreet little bead at the bottom. The other two fanny packs were closed with slip stitches. All that remains is to assemble the shoulder strap. For the pattern with the small piece of raw webbing, we'll insert the small piece of webbing into a loop passing over it. Then fold the webbing over about 3 cm. I then make a 1 cm tuck and can stitch through the 3 layers. Now that's stitched, note that on the other two fanny packs, I had mounted this piece of strap differently and the loop was already in place. This illustrates two ways of finishing this side of the shoulder strap. We'll now move on to the other part of the strap. I'm going to pass the long strap through a sliding buckle from underneath, then over the adjusting bar and finally under the sliding buckle. I need to leave the strap loose with some slack, like this. Then I'll insert the end of the shoulder strap into the loop from above. I'll pass this end back through the sliding buckle, passing underneath and then over the top of the bar for about seven centimeters. The passage is between the buckle and the loose strap. I'm going to finish by making a one centimeter tuck. The end of the strap with its tuck is to be applied against the strap below and stitched with solid stitches back and forth. The top strap must not be caught in the stitching, otherwise the shoulder strap would no longer be adjustable. Here are the shoulder straps mounted on the three models. To make an optional decorative pom-pom, cut an 8 by 10 cm rectangle from the imitation leather or leather, then a 0.5 by 20 cm strip to form the fastening. On the wrong side of the rectangle, mark a horizontal line 1.5 cm from the top. Then I mark vertical lines on the bottom of the rectangle, spaced 0.5 cm apart. I use a ruler or patchwork ruler. I then cut along the vertical lines to form bangs. Using a suitable textile glue, I glue the wrong side of the rectangle along the 1.5 cm strip above the bangs. Then I also glue the two ends of the fastener for 1.5 cm. I'll now superimpose the two ends of the wrong sides together clip. 
I place the ends of the fastener almost at the edge of the glued rectangle and, starting from the edge with the fastener, I fold the strip over itself, rolling it up and pulling it tight. The fastener is caught in the roll. This forms the pom-pom and I hold it tightly between my fingers for a few minutes to allow the glue to set and dry. All that's left is to attach the pom-pom to the loop, first threading the tie and then passing the pom-pom through the two strands of the tie. The pom-pom is now securely in place, of course, I can detach it if I wish. And that's it, your Ica Banana bag is finished. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. We can't wait to see your versions, so join us on Instagram with the hashtag Ikati Ikabanana. See you soon at Ikati.